Hey, I'm Danson and today we're gonna talk and draw a little bit about Japanese ghosts. Japanese ghosts, uh, they call them yurei in Japanese and it can have all kind of different shapes and but it's mostly it can be good ghosts, it can be bad ghosts, but it can be people who got murdered, uh, who made suicide and they come back in the afterlife. So today I'm using as usual a rat pan to do my little uh, how to to build up the design and I have a small brush pan and a big brush pan and I'm using normal white paper. Let's start with the whole body. So I do a little circle for the hat um, I'm gonna do now, let's start with the first one, it's a straight one, floating around ghost. I would do the hat, I do a little neck. What I like to do is put a little structure of where the arms are and where the ribs are and where would be the bottom part. So I, I use little dots. So this would be my shoulders then i do the spine um here would be and you never really see the legs of ghosts it's like also in Uruguay in amber in our traditional story history that you see the ghosts floating around and you don't really never see the legs so what i like to do is always do the the coat of the ghost floating around so we can do a, a kind of a little shape so let's see so and then we start I start with the body so here are the dots where the arms so let's say I always like to um, to visualize in my head how like even looking myself in the mirror and I do the shape like if it would be the ghost it would floating around like this like a dead body like kind of a zombie it could have one arm up so if I don't know how to draw it I what is a good trick is like to take a little picture of yourself to have that um, what I also like to do is I reference a lot of ghosts so I have an amount of reference of Japanese ghosts I found in all my books and it's always good to have a little reference to see and not to go only from your head because it's pretty much impossible to know exactly it is possible there are people who can do it I can't so okay let's start with the code um, and I'm gonna do kind of this one like floating around and so these are the shoulders one arm here one here another dot for the elbow and here would be the hand and the hand I do after I have the coat so here would be the neck so I don't know how you call this part but that would be here Okay, then for the coat, the coat, the coat always looks very big on all the prints. So what makes it also giving that floating uh, look? So Then I would do the same on the other side. Here I'm only doing a little lines to see where the code is folding later. But I'm gonna show you guys later when I'm doing with the brush pen how I like to do these lines because it there's like this kind of that brush style uh, look, which I think it's important because if I'm tattooing it. 
I like to have the coat in a really thick line and then again the lines of the ghost itself the face and the hands I use a smaller line because it gives it this this difference of the look it uh, it's more recognizable ways what so this is the coat and then these are the shoulders and then this part of the coat and then this would be kind of the breast and then floating down maybe I did it a little bit too big here what I also now here I would prefer that the head is a little bit more down the neck would be shorter because the goat is more like it's already like it's a dead human it's like if you see zombies in the movies they are never like this they are more like, like get together like they are like ah uh, I don't know it's I think you guys know what I mean I don't need to describe it it's sometimes I don't find it words in English so I try to make it with movements that you guys know what I'm talking about but I also so I would take the head and I would push it a little bit down and I would do it in a little angle that it's more like like this looking so it's not looking on the peel but it's more looking down and it's like kind of like a zombie okay then we have the coat what a I like either either. I like to do the ghost with long hair because it gives you a nice floating but sometimes I also like it to do only a little bit here. So this one we do with the long hair. So before I'm sh starting shaping the face I'm doing the hair first. So I do only a little bit the lines for the face, how you would build any face up, here the ear. This would be the nose, here would be the mouth. And then I'm already starting doing the hair. Here's like the hairline. So I'm and then again the hair I can do it straight, but I can also do it like kind of wavish, like fl more floating. I like to do the hair a little bit coming over the face, over the neck. And what is a good trick? If you wanna if you wanna hide something, use hair. <laughs> it's it I think everybody has these tricks that you like. Maybe you have you're struggling with something on the coat or something on the shoulder. It's always good to use like hair to hide it a little bit. I think it's it's like a trick like every like everyone has these small tricks. What I like to do with the hair is I coming out behind it a little bit. Okay, and then I have more or less the hair and then I'm coming to the face. The face you see different girls. You see women who are, they pretty much look the same. Maybe only the teeth is looking a little bit uh, more spooky, uh, the eyes. But then you also see the ghost where one eye is really swollen and it hangs up and one is normal. So for me, that's like, it's kind of what, how I like to see a ghost. So I always do one eyelid hanging down a little bit and the other eye is more flopping out. Then I do the nose. The nose also you can do as many shapes. And, but I like to look at always a little bit which style. And then it can have the mouth open. I'm, I'm going to do it later with black so you guys can see better. I like to make it look in the teeth and also like this, that it's like, it's, 
you never really see ghosts smiling so it always has the Ugh, like this ti being tired being uh, confused being like yeah like looking not that happy and of course the whole story with the ghosts in Japanese is like they somehow they come back they could get betrayed maybe their husband murdered them and they're coming back to take revenge but they are never really happy and they are some are there for taking revenge on somebody so they are not really happy okay now and then well, I, I, uh, the texture stuff i'm explaining more at the end so now i have the hat I do the, the chin hanging down a little bit, maybe a little bit double chin, making the bones looking a little bit out. Uh, you can, it can, the coat can also hang from the shoulders. Um, like, yeah, there's many possibilities. And then the hands, the hands are like that look that they look very bony. It's n yeah, I, f I think I like that, that look that it's like hungry, that it's like, uh, like that the skin is only on the bones. And I like this, this thing that the hands hanging down, like, like it's, it's that kind of a picture I like to see in a ghost. So again, I'm building up my hand, I'm putting some dots where could be the knuckles. And then I do simple lines. I do here the fingers and I do one, two, three, one, one, two, three, one, two, three. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And I do a fourth here, one, two, three. And then because it's inside, so here would be the big one, one, two, one. And that's how I would build up a hand. And then I do the whole, I start first with the head and then the hand and then I do the coat. Okay, I start with the finger. I like really always to do the fingers. So I do first the little knuckles. And I know more or less how I like to look my finger, make them look so. And then I come over here. The fingers is a thing also I think of repeatedly drawing it. It's nothing you you sit there and you do it and it looking really fine the first time. It needs a little bit. It needs to you have to redraw it and redraw it and at some point point you know what you're doing it's always good I, I don't like if you do the fingers for example and you do only two and you do this like no really start if it's a yokai and you don't know if he has only two fingers then I think it's fine but I think the ghost is a human so stay with the human shapes oh. And then I do this one a little bit shorter because it's more the front. I think the the big finger is always the, the, the most difficult for me. Because it has only two and then how it goes over to the other one. Then also you can do long nails, you can do no nails. You do however you feel and then I come here over and this would be the arm. Um, I always think it's important to do the direction of the arm because after it's important with the direction of the arm to know where the coat goes. The coat, I'm gonna let's go, let's stay with the, the head. Sorry, um, then the head. I do one eye a little bit more open. I start with the eyes, I do a little bit lid around. Then I'm coming with the nose. I do. I like to do the nose 
a little bit looking like a witch. And I think the face of a ghost is not looking like a child. It's old. So it's nice to do all the wrinkles everywhere. Like. And make and give it character. And then here's the eye, which is a little bit so it looks like it's swollen. You can also you can let the eyes blank. There you you can do whatever you, you think or however you like it. Then the words. And then here's the lip. Maybe do the mouth a little bit down and then the teeth. I like if I color it in later, I like to do the teeth maybe black or a little bit dark or yellow or really white. But I always like to do color in the teeth so they come nice out and they're only small. And also if I'm tattooing teeth, eyes, I always use a small liner. Uh, it works for me and I think it looks good in the future. It, if you would already line it with a big liner, you sure later it's gonna look like uh, like a mess. That's my experience of seeing my tattoos coming back over years. And the same for the hair. I think if it's more like more if you go in that authentic Japanese tattoo style, then you can do big lines for the hair. But that's again, it's a, it's it's your choice. I personally prefer it to do it with very small lines. Here's the ear. Here you can do you can do the the ear the down part a little bit longer because with all people you see that the, everything on of the skin on all people is hanging a little bit. So and goes of course it it, it gives me more like if I think about a ghost it's more like I have this vision that it looks like an old man but of course it's also young like ghosts who look more like young people because it can be also a young guy who got murdered or uh, died okay, and then for the hair I'm gonna use uh, a small. this is like a very small pointer it has nothing to do with the brush it's a normal faber castell i don't want to come back. but every every pen artist pen with a small point is doing it I like to do the hair fast because the hair is never it's not that it's the every hair is like straight but it can go a little bit over it can have one hair hanging out and also with the shading later in the hair it's also, you, um, however you like it. If you if you like to shade it full black, sometimes I even put color in it. It can have yellow hair. You it's, do however you you like it, but don't you don't have to do it as everybody. I think if you like to do a ghost with wet hair, do a ghost with wet hair if it works for you. What I also like. If I'm doing ghosts, is to do a little bit of dots on the head so it looks a little bit rotten and it gives it a little bit more character. Maybe under the, or put a little bit more black around the eye so it makes later with a little bit white and yellow in the eye, it makes the eye pop out really good. And now the coat. The coat is very important, I think, because I can use these Japanese brush style lines. 
I like to, if I prepare the drawing, I like to do it with a brush pen because it gives this this Japanese. So I start at the bottom and I push it and I come up. And this is again a thing of drawing all the years. So I know more or less where I have, where I want to go bigger. If I want to do one more line here, I do it now fast. So yeah, but this is like, and I think it's there. It's important to look a little bit at Japanese prints to see how the code is built up. And the better you understand the code, the better it's going to look later for. And then you can put here a little bit shading. So it looks, it gives you the feeling where the code is in. Here again, the same. And then another. I like to do it at the bottom like this. I'm coming back. And then also what I really like on the Japanese goats is that they have around their belly that they have this towel. Now we, here because of the other arm it's a little bit hidden but I only show it fast here so it comes out and here's like a knot like this. So it's more like a towel who is strapped around him. I do this fast, only that you guys see. And then I take the brush. And then at the end, I like to do this and then connect it up. Here it goes around. Here again, this kind of a Z. Connect it here. That's only one of the stuff what you can use on a ghost, but I think it's always good to take a look at Japanese ghost, Japanese Yurei and see the how they draw it and which kind of versions there can be like f i saw many kinds of go like you see old people as a ghost you see women men you see uh, animals looking ghosts uh, so there's such a big selection but i think the best is yeah get into it uh, Google it, uh, go in, in library, check in old books, in old Japanese books, and you're going to find there's a big amount of it. So I hope to see you guys back tomorrow. Thank you very much.